Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you on the bright side. We welcome your calls. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about formulations, ingredients, a health challenge you or a loved one may be dealing with, a skin health challenge, we're talking about the skin here. Uh, We will be talking about the skin here for the next few days. If you have uh, questions about ingredients or formulations or a comment or success story, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, please go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. All the Longevity products are posted up, and we've got news stories and blog posts and videos and all kinds of health information at criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com, and brightsideben.com. You can also sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team off the websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business, be in business for yourself, for and thank you checks associated with having your own business. Help change the world with the power of nutrition. If you've experienced the power of a nutritional supplement program, spread the word, pay it forward. Help other folks. You make some money at the same time. You can have your own business, make as much or as little money as you want, work as many or as few hours as you like. Call 866-735-2470 for more info. You can also sign up right off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for a one-time $25 fee. You can be in business for yourself. And if you're interested in checking out some Primo skin health products, if you're dealing with dark spots, hyperpigmentation, wrinkles, fine lines, or if you don't want to be dealing with fine lines and wrinkles, if you have acne blemishes, you, you need to be using on a regular basis Truth Retinol 5% Gel, made with vitamin C, retinol in our transdermal delivery matrix. That's it. No preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, surfactants, silicon, oil, water, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth treatment products. You can find out all about them. Truth Transdermal C Serum, Truth Transdermal C Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and our Truth Retinol 5% Gel at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. Thanks for joining us. We're talking about wounding and uh, the inflammatory process. We went through the whole, uh, all the stages of wounding. We talked about the white blood cells migrating to the area. We talked about how wounding is actually, if it's done correctly, is actually in our interest. Controlled wounding. The most famous, obvious example of controlled wounding is called exercise. That's what exercise is. It's controlled trauma or controlled wounding. You don't want to overwound and over-traumatize. You don't want to underwound and under-traumatize. There's a sweet spot of trauma and a sweet spot of of damage and wounding that will actually turn on the growth systems, the growth processes, growth chemistry, not just physically, psychologically, emotionally, mentally. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. A little bit of stress is actually a good thing. Stress is not the problem. Even though we hear about how all the problems associated with stress, I've been guilty of using that word incorrectly myself. 
It's not stress that is the problem. It's the response or the lack of response or the under or over response to stress that really is the problem, not the stress itself. Stress can be leveraged and nowhere in the body is this idea of leveraging stress more dramatic and more obvious than on the skin. We can actually turn on inflammatory processes in a controlled fashion in the skin and then enjoy its benefits. We can activate the inflammatory response in the skin and enjoy its benefits without having to kill any cells. That's because the skin surface is lined with cell-like material, actually cell shells, cell carcasses, the remainder of cells. The skin surface is lined with these things. And even though it's not alive, it can be manipulated. It can be worked. The surface of the skin is made up of these cellular shells, these, these carcasses, the remainder of live cells that have risen to the top. The skin surface is called the stratum corneum, hard layer, represents one of the most important, maybe even the most important control points for healthy, beautiful skin. That's because the stratum corneum has got a lot of activity going on. It's, yes, it's made up of dead cells, but there's lots of stuff going on. And while the stratum corneum can and should be used as a leverage point for beautiful, youthful, wrinkle-free skin. And also, while many health challenges are the function of the stratum corneum, psoriasis comes to mind, eczema is a stratum corneum issue, acne can be a stratum corneum issue. A lot of skin problems are related to stratum corneum problems. But still, the cells themselves that compose this tiny little slender slice of tissue are themselves not alive. The stratum corneum is so amazing. It may be the most amazing piece of tissue in the entire body. It holds everything in place. We are all held in place by a, a thin layer, about one-tenth as thin or as thick as a piece of notebook paper. And even though it's made up of dead cells, there's a lot of chemistry going on in the stratum corneum, which means we want to be paying attention to how we take care of it. So a quick review on the structure of the skin. You've got three main layers. The bottom most layer is the bulk of the skin. You can't really see that unless you cut yourself. That's where the blood supply is. That's where nerves are. That's where all the connective tissue is, the, the fibers, the collagen, the elastin, the famous high al uronic acid that you hear so much about that plumps the skin and holds water. All that stuff is being made in the dermis. When we're young and our skin is plump and juicy and beefy, our dermis is thick and it's strong and it's resilient and it kind of has a, uh, an elastic nature. It's plump. You can know it when you see it. If you look at a kid, a little kid, like a four or five year old kid, you are looking at a dermis that is so beautiful. As we get older, not so much. As we get older, the dermis starts to thin. This is exactly what happens to the bones. And it's pretty much the same stuff. It's connective tissue. The bones, and the, uh, and the uh, dermis are made up of connective tissue. And you can always tell if you're prone towards osteoporosis by, your, by the dermis. If your dermis is thinning, you rest assured your connective tissue in your bones and, and in your blood and blood vessels is also thinning. You can use your skin. If you understand this whole interrelationship, the connection between everything, you can really read the inside of the body by looking at the skin. If you see a lot of wrinkles on your face, if your skin is getting dramatically thin, you can rest assured it's happening to your bones. You can rest assured it's happening to your blood vessels, meaning higher risk for heart disease, higher risk for cholesterol plaques, higher risk for uh, disruptions in blood flow to the cells, higher risk for uh, uh, early demise and a decreased longevity. Your skin can tell you all this if you understand how to speak skin. Yeah, it's true. We all want to have beautiful skin and we'll plump it up with Juvederm. We'll stick, inject stuff in there to plump it up or have plastic surgery to pretend like make people think we don't have wrinkles. But nonetheless, you're still, we're still deteriorating on the inside. Even with a facelift, even with the, you know, all the process, all the things you do, all the, all the things cosmetic, sur plastic surgeons and, and cosmetic surgeons do to make the skin look like it's not thinning, it's still thinning on the inside. The trick is to understand what's happening on the skin and then respond accordingly with corrective measure, measures, and there's lots you can do. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we 
far back on the bright side. Farm Spen here, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open for you at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about skin health or the longevity products or formulations, ingredients, something you may have heard about, read about, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you have a comment or success story, likewise, 844 236 6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, please go to my website, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. We've got news stories, blog posts. We also have an archive page at Ben Fuchs Archives and benfuchsarchive.com, also brightsideben.com. If you miss a program or want to review a program, brightsideben.com and Ben Fuchs Archives and benfuchsarchive.com have all the programs in the search engine that you can use to review specific subjects or dates. All right, so we're talking about the skin. I love the stratum corneum, that surface of the skin. I'm just absolutely blown away, fascinated by the stratum corneum. I'm not the only one. There's all kinds of textbooks written about this little tiny slice of tissue that's about a tenth of a piece of notebook paper thick, but is so important when it comes to skin health and so important when it comes to skin disease. Most of our skincare products work at the level of the stratum corneum for better or worse. If some, uh, when you rub a moisturizer on your skin, you're not really doing much to your skin itself. You're only softening the stratum corneum. Moisturizer is a very misleading word. There's no such thing as a moisturizer. It's so important because we spend billions of dollars on products that we think are moisturizers. There's no such thing as a moisturizer. It is a complete hypnotic trance that we're under when we rub a product on our skin and think we've moisturized. Moisture is water, and a cream with wax and oil and silicon is not going to help do anything for water except perhaps keep it from evaporating. That's the best you're going to do. Most, for the most part, a moisturizer simply softens the stratum corneum, simply softens the hard cells. And we rub it on our skin, and we soften the, the hard cells with the, with the oil or the wax, and we think we've moisturized. We've done nothing of the kind. In fact, even worse than that, we've suppressed moisture factors that are inherent in the skin and that adjust themselves to the environment. That's why we get addicted to our moisturizers, so-called moisturizers. So you got three main layers to your skin. You got the bottommost layer, that's the dermis. The dermis is the part that thins when we get old, like the bones thin when we get old, like the blood vessels thin when we get old, like we all thin and shrivel up when we get old. That's what, the, that's what uh, uh, wrinkles are really all about. Wrinkles are a dermal phenomena. Wrinkles are in the dermis. So the only way to keep yourself from wrinkling is to figure out a way to take care of the dermis. Luckily, and we'll talk about this, you can take care of the dermis. You can address the dermis. You could actually even address the dermis via the stratum corneum. That is so cool. That's why I said earlier the stratum corneum is our leverage point because you can communicate to the dermis by manipulating the stratum corneum. It's so important. Let me say that again. You can manipulate the dermis. You can turn on the cells of the dermis to make more stuff by working with the stratum corneum. The dermis is the, is the seat of activity. That's the nexus of, of aging when it, comes to, when it comes to our skin. And we can actually turn it on, thicken it up by working at the level of the, of the stratum corneum because they're talking to each other. The layers are talking to each other. They're communicating to each other. They're communicating to each other, not in words, but in chemicals. We talked about those chemicals a couple days ago, last week. We talked about chemicals that are released when cells are damaged. They're called cytokines. When these chemicals are released, they actually will communicate. They communicate to white blood cells. They communicate to the fibroblasts. They're communicating. This idea of cells communicating, communicating to each other and layers of, of tissue communicating to each other and organs communicating to each other is super fascinating. And it's only something we've known about for about 100 years now. And even your, today, your typical medical professional doesn't even know, really know about it. They'll use drugs that affect it. That's how drugs work, by the way, or many drugs work by interfering with this communication process. Many illnesses are a result of disruptions at the level of this communication process. Inflammation will disrupt this communication process. But if we know what we're doing, we can use this communication process. We can take advantage of this communication process by applying stuff to the stratum corneum, by working with the stratum corneum. Yeah, it's the dermis where the action is, but we can, manip we can, we can manipulate it by working with the stratum corneum. 
The dermis is where the blood is. It's where the nerves are. There's not a lot of cells in the dermis. It's mostly just blood, uh, hyaluronic acid, collagen, elastin. It's mostly stuff. Remember, the body's made up of cells and stuff. Two components, cells and stuff. In the dermis, it's mostly stuff. The cells of the dermis, they're called fibroblasts, and they are the quintessential anti-aging cells in the body. And they're the, capital T, anti-aging cells in the skin. And when we talk about stimulating the dermis, what we're really talking about is the fibroblast, the cell that makes the stuff. We want to be able to access the cell that makes the stuff. The fibroblast is making the collagen. It's making the elastin, which is like collagen. It's making the hyaluronic acid. It's making the stuff that will give your dermis its beefy, thick quality. So stimulating the dermis is really a function of stimulating the fibroblast. There's lots of ways to do it. My truth treatment products are specifically designed to turn on the fibroblast, to feed the fibroblast. The fibroblast eats like all cell eats. It eats from the inside out, that is the blood. Nutrients are constantly being, being delivered to the blood, to the fibroblast via the blood. But here's the cool thing about the fibroblast in the skin. You can feed it from the outside in. Yeah, it's true. The inside out is always the most important. But with the fibroblast, because it's on the outside of the body, it's in the skin, we can actually feed it from the outside in. Now, there's not a lot of things that can feed that fibroblast. There's only two, really. There's only two foods that the fibroblast will eat. They're called vitamins. And there are two specific vitamins, vitamin C and vitamin A. And this makes vitamin C and vitamin A the most important ingredients you could ever put on your skin, period. That's it. In fact, there really isn't very much you can do for your skin, with the exception of stimulating it, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. There isn't very much you could do from an ingredient perspective except for vitamin A and vitamin C. That's why my true treatment products are delivery systems for vitamin A and vitamin C. There's a couple other ingredients maybe that can have a calming effect. But you're not going to be able to feed the fibroblast other than with vitamin A and vitamin C. And conversely, if you use vitamin A and vitamin C topically, you can do significant things to the fibroblast. You can significantly upregulate it, stimulate it, activate it, turn it on. So there's not a lot of cells in the dermis, but those cells in the dermis that, that are there, the fibroblasts, they are uber important when it comes to anti-aging. So the dermis makes up 90% of the skin. The other 10% uh, is made up of the, t the top two layers, the epidermis, meaning on top of the dermis, and the stratum corneum. The epidermis is also pretty cool, not as cool as the connective tissue. And as we age, the epidermis also thins out. And so turning on the epidermis is also important. And under, to understand how to turn on the epidermis, you've got to kind of understand uh, how that important, tissue, important piece of tissue is structured as well. And we will talk about that. We'll continue talking about that when we come back from our break. And in coming episodes on the bright side, we'll also get your phone calls. Actually, we've got nobody on the board. On the board so uh, we'll do just some news stories. And, uh, and if, you're on, if anybody has any questions or comments, now's the time to get on board. 866-735-2470. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. We are back on the bright side. My pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24 7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, uh, sorry, brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com and benfuchsarchive.com. 844 236 6010 is our number. We've got lines open for you and nobody on board. So if you've uh, tried to get on board in the past and not been able to. Now's the time. 844-236-6010. Reading from the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism, New Link Between Gut Bacteria and Obesity. Researchers at Lund University in Sweden have discovered a link between gut bacteria and obesity. They found certain amino acids in the blood that are connected to obesity are also connected to the gut microbiome. I've been saying this for years. This is one of the great underappreciated connections to all of health to obesity, to weight problems, to diabetes, and uh, autoimmune diseases and immune diseases. 
And that's the gut bacteria. Also the fat metabolism. Also how we process fats. Gut bacteria really are the core of everything. That's the start of the disease process. That's the, the triangle of disease or the three points that, uh, that lead to all diseases, all chronic diseases, the digestive system, the blood sugar system, and the adrenal thyroid complex. Well, the gut bacteria, the so-called microbiome, are at the center of the center. They're the first of the first. The first point in the triangle of disease, the digestive tract, the first point of the first point is the gut bacteria, the microbiome, and not a day goes by literally without some new article or study or, or research, uh, research that uh, connects the gut bacteria to health. And I remember in pharmacy school, we were just starting to understand this in the 1980s, just starting to understand the importance of gut bacteria. And it wasn't really until the 2000s when it really got going, research on the gut bacteria. In the 1990s, nobody even really knew about it. Just starting in like maybe late 90s. Today, it's well known that there's not a single health challenge that cannot be modified or there's not a single health challenge that cannot be caused by disruptions at the level of the gut bacteria, especially in terms of fat and sugar. If you have any kind of digestive health issues, rest assured, it is going to lead to problems with fat metabolism eventually and blood sugar problems eventually. And this link between the digestive system and, and uh, uh, diabetes is critical to understand if we are going to be able to uh, deal with this unbelievable epidemic of dysglycemia that Americans and, and citizens around the world are dealing with. We have to understand the link between gut bacteria and blood sugar. Now, it all goes wrong very early in life, usually at birth, for many of us anyway, at birth. Gut bacteria, the gut microbiome, the gut bacteria, the, the universe of, of bugs, of germs, so-called germs, that live in our intestine, implant at birth, when a baby comes through the birth canal. If you're born cesarean section, that's not going to happen. Once the bacteria implant, breast milk is required for those bacteria to, uh, to thrive, to grow, to, to, to uh, perpetuate, to live. If breast milk does not have what it's supposed to have, or if we're not breastfed, that's not going to happen either. Then we get into problems with processing energy because the microbiome helps us process energy from food. Then we crave sugar. Your babies who are colicky and oftentimes are the, co the parents, our parents, take care of colicky babies by giving them sugar. Most parents know that when you give a baby sugar, it'll keep the baby quiet for a little bit and the kid quiet for a little bit, for a little bit. But then the kid goes into low blood sugar and he has to have more sugar. This is where diabetes, this is the, these are the beginnings of diabetes and it occurs in kids who are newborns basically, or at least infants. And it all boils down to the gut bacteria. Do you know the gut bacteria will actually tell you what kind of foods to eat? Your gut bacteria will tell you to eat potato chips or tell you to eat carrots or tell you to eat lettuce, or tell you to eat french fries. Our gut bacteria communicate to our brain, telling, telling our brain what, what kind of foods to choose so that the gut bacteria can be satisfied. If you have any kind of health issue, period, no matter what it is, get on the nightly essence. Use more fiber. Use apple cider vinegar. These are all strategies for helping with the gut bacteria, for helping support gut bacteria. And clear, 100%, if you're dealing with any kind of digestive health issue, including heartburn, including GERD, uh, reflux disease, that's a classic sign of a disruption in the gut bacteria. Sugars can especially throw off the gut bacteria, by the way. The five, you may have heard of the FODMAPS diet. It's a special low-sugar diet, low-carbohydrate diet. The FODMAPS diet, F-O-D-M-A-P-S. FODMAPS diet is ideal for people who are dealing with bloatedness, gas, any kind of digestive discomfort after meals. It's a pretty strict diet to have to live up to because everything has sugars in it, so it's real hard. But, you know, if you're sick, it's worth it. The, the suffering that we have to endure due to laying off our favorite foods is well worth it if you're sick. And if you're really, really sick, it's not even a choice. If we're really, really sick, we can train ourselves to look at our favorite foods and somehow hypnotically induce ourselves into being repulsed by them. If you can connect your favorite foods to a digestive problem, a severe digestive problem, we can actually hypnotize ourselves. We can actually condition ourselves. That's a better word. We can actually condition ourselves to being repulsed by our favorite foods. 
And it's pretty. It's a pretty good idea. It's it's a smart idea to do that if you're dealing with any kind of health challenge, especially if it's a, a, a miserable digestive health challenge. You can also use fermented foods, of course. That's another great way to get your bacteria. The combination of fermented foods and and probiotics. It's probably best to combine the two, fermented foods and probiotics. Fermented vegetables are especially important because they'll get you nitrogen, and nitrogen is important for bacteria, as it's important for all bugs as any farmer knows. Nitrogen is also important for the bacteria that live in the gut. So making sure you're getting nitrates and nitrites in the form of beets and celery and cucumber and spinach and kale. Veggie juices. We should all be doing veggie juices every day. Get yourself some fresh veggies, chop them up or cut them up, stick them in a plastic bag, throw a bunch of salt or spices on them, and then uh, stick it in the freezer. And then... When you want a quick veggie juice, just take it out of the plastic bag and dump it in your Vitamix with a little bit of water. It, it's take you two minutes. And it'll be a delicious way to get your nitrates for your digestive tract, a delicious way to get your fiber for your digestive tract, a delicious way to get your phytonutrients for your digestive tract, and, and lots of other things. It fills you up. It's a great way to start your meals. You won't eat as much. And it's super handy. That way you don't have to deal with a bunch of produce in your fridge. I always have a problem with produce in my fridge because it always invariably will deteriorate before I have a chance to use it. So that's why I just chop it up and stick it in the freezer in individual units. And you just put it in, put it in a Vitamix and it makes a quick, instant drink. And don't forget your salt and your spices on your veggies. All right. Let's see. This is from the University of Western Sydney. Sleep and time with pets help people living with bipolar disorder. New research from Western Sydney University has revealed that simple self-care strategies such as spending time with animals and getting enough sleep are helpful for people managing bipolar, bipolar disorder symptoms. What do you think that's about? It's about cortisol. It's about so-called stress hormone. That's one, one of the easiest ways to reduce your cortisol is to pet a cat or to pet a dog. Why? Because when you pet a cat or pet a dog, you're not thinking about yourself. Cortisol, elevated cortisol, so-called stress, mental stress and emotional stress, is the ultimate price we pay for thinking too much about ourselves. And when you pet a cat or pet a dog, you're outside of yourself. You're thinking about something else. All right, we'll finish up. We come back from our break. Got lines open, 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. On the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Continuing on, uh, no phone calls here, so we'll just continue on. From the University of Western Sydney, sleep, with sleep and time with pets help people living with bipolar disorder. When we think outside ourselves, the body naturally calms down. The word ecstasy means ecstasis, means to stand outside. Ecstasis, to stand outside yourself. When we th the price we pay for being self-centered, for, for self-awareness, for the inner dialogue, for thinking, listening to our own thoughts, listening to our own voices is going crazy. And that's why our society is collectively going crazy. We're thinking too much. But when you pet a cat or you pet a dog or you look at a baby or take care of something, someone or something that's more vulnerable than you, you tell the body everything's okay. From a, from a uh, neurochemical standpoint, cortisol drops. And oxytocin goes up, healthy hormones increase, and unhealthy hormones decrease, and we feel better. Sleep does the same thing. Sleep is a wonderful way to lower cortisol. One of the reasons we can't sleep too much is because our cortisol is too high. This was research published in the journal Clinical Psychologist, 80 patients with bipolar disorder, uh, reviewing the frequency and perceived helpfulness of 69 self care strategies. That means drug-free strategies. That means doctor-free strategies. The idea of medicating ourselves for bipolar disorder is crazy. There's no way you can be medicated back to mental health. You can be medicated back to stability, maybe, and I'm not saying that's not a good thing sometimes, but you can't get yourself better from an emotional disorder by taking drugs. You can't get yourself better for any disorder by taking drugs. And sleep, as it turns out, does exactly the same thing. From... Uh, this one is from the journal Cell Host and Microbe. 
gut, gut microbes pre- protect against sepsis. Sepsis is dirty blood. Behind all chronic degenerative diseases, you will find dirty blood. Gut microbes help protect against sepsis. In other words, the good bacteria protect against the bad bacteria. Good bacteria act as a detoxifying element. Good, uh, just another example of how important the gut microbiome is and how important gut bacteria are. From, uh, uh, let's see here, this is from Texanov Medical Textiles in France. A team of researchers has announced a new type of shirt, a shirt that has optical fibers built into it that can be used to treat skin diseases. How do you like that? They put fiber, fibers in the shirts that attract light, fibers in the shirt that absorb light, and they heal skin diseases. Once again, underscoring, highlighting, demonstrating the importance of light. The importance of the sun. Heliophobia is one of the three great scams of the modern medical model, along with the cholesterol theory and the central dogma. Those are the three great fallacies, the three great medical blunders of our, of our modern medical model. That is the cholesterol theory of heart disease, that cholesterol causes heart disease, that the sun is the enemy and you've got to wear sunscreens all the time and you should stay out of the sun. And that uh, genes cause everything, the central dogma. Those are the three great lies of the medical model. Maybe not lies, misunderstandings, we'll say. It turns out now that they can, they're looking at uh, developing textiles, to, uh, clothing actually, that can help attract the sun, absorb the light of the sun, uh, absorb specific frequencies of, of sunlight, fr- uh, specific sunlight waves that can help heal psoriasis and help heal actinic keratosis, which is a pre- type of precancer. By the way, if you're dealing with actinic keratosis, you want to be using our Truth Fiber Retinol 5% Gel, AK, as it is known, as pre-skin cancer. Isn't that cool how retinol is actually anti-cancer? Retinol is actually used as chemotherapy. Retinol, topically, can actually help reduce the incidences of skin cancer. And it can help improve pre-skin cancer. And internally, retinol is actually chemotherapy. I don't know how many people know that. Retinol, vitamin A, is actually chemotherapy. Mere old vitamin A is no mere vitamin. Vitamin A and vitamin D are so darn important for for overall health because they're not just vitamins. They have multiple effects. And by the way, vitamin A and vitamin D work together. They're your building substances, and they are very dependent on fat metabolism. They're very dependent on how well we handle fats, and they're very dependent on a healthy intestine. Vitamin A and vitamin D require special chemistry, special biochemistry to be able to transport through the intestine into the cells. That's because vitamin A and vitamin D are so powerful that the body controls how much we get very tightly. You got to be you got to be firing on all cylinders from an intestinal perspective to be able to absorb vitamin A and vitamin D out of the gut. And that's why you can that's why supplementing with things is not all you need to be taken care of. A lot of times people say, "Well, I started a, I'm on the longevity products, but I still have psoriasis. I'm on the longevity products, but I still have uh, skin problems. I'm on the longevity products, but I still have autoimmune diseases. Well, it's not just what you take, it's what you absorb. Especially when it comes to the building substances like vitamin A and vitamin D and also zinc. The body controls its building very tightly. It doesn't want us overbuilding. And so building substances tend to be harder for the body to absorb. If you're trying to grow and repair, if you're trying to anti-age, if you're trying to uh, nutriate post-workout, it's really important to make sure you're taking care of your intestinal health. This is especially important with vitamin A and zinc. And by the way, fructose, and for that matter, sucrose, but particularly fructose, have a down-regulating ability or down-regulate the amount of vitamin A and zinc that can be absorbed. Fructose malabsorption syndrome, when you have problems utilizing fructose, are also associated with deficiencies in vitamin A and vitamin D. I'm sorry, vitamin A and zinc. You're building substances. If that's not a good enough reason to reduce your intake of fructose and sucrose as we get older, as we get older, it becomes extra important to reduce our intake of these things because these fructose and sucrose are powerfully, powerfully aging, pro-aging substances. Of course, glucose, everything breaks down into glucose. So that means that's where calorie restriction comes in. And that's one of the reasons why calorie restriction has been shown over and over and over again to be pro-longevity. And it's also one of the reasons why Keeping your insulin down is also associated with increased longevity. Keeping your calories down, keeping your insulin down. 
How do you keep your calories down? Well, just when we eat from our bodies, when we eat from our bellies, not from our brain, that'll help. How do you keep your sugar down? Well, that's a little tougher, but making sure you get enough protein is one great strategy for keeping your sugar down. Eating more fiber is another strategy. Making sure you're doing veggie juices, as we said earlier, that's another way to fill yourself. You know, you'll notice that if you eat, if you eat fiber or veggies or something that is, per, has a perceived goodness to it, that seem like it's good to us or make us feel good, we're much less likely to eat other kinds of foods. Subtle tastes like the kinds you, you get in vegetables are easily overwhelmed by more explosive tastes like sugar. So if you try to eat your veggies before your sh or after your sugar, it's not going to taste as good. But if you eat your veggies before your sugar, if you eat your veg veggies before your starches, you'll find that you're much less likely to go with the sugar and go with the starches. That's why you want to start off all your meals with veggie juice or start off all your meals with some kind of veggies. Even if it's just frozen, even if it's just uh, microwave frozen veggies. Anything, anytime you start your meal off with something good or healthy for you, you're going to be much less likely to want to go for foods that are unhealthy for you. Just another example of these kinds of strategies that we can employ in our lives, ourselves, to get healthy. That's why I always say, health is not complicated. Health is as simple as eating correctly, moving your body, supplementing, leveraging emotional and mental and, and spiritual strategies. It really is as simple as that. This idea that health has to be complicated is not, it, it, it doesn't serve us. It serves the purveyors of medicine, the purveyors of complication, the purveyors of the, of the complexity of the biological system. It doesn't serve us as patients or us as individuals. It's why we have more doctors per capita than any other culture in the history of the planet, and we are sicker than any other culture in the history of the planet is at the same time. It's why the medical model has failed us. But it doesn't matter because we don't need the medical model. We can do it all ourselves by following the simple basic ideas that we talk about here on the Bright Side every day. And it all really boils down to just nutriate, respirate, move, and rest. Nutriate with foods and good nutrition. Respirate by moving your body as much as you can. Even if you're morbidly obese, you can still move your body. Even if you're a, a, even if you're a quadriplegic, you could still move your facial muscles. By the way, moving your facial muscles is a great way to improve lymphatic drainage in the face. And that's a whole other issue, the lymphatic system when it comes to skin health, when it comes to good health. All right. That's all the time we have for today on The Bright Side. Thanks for listening, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Please check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for all the longevity products. And click on the Join the Team link if you want to start a longevity business. And also check out our truth treatment products at truthtreatments.com. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.